5. The greatest creator is impartial. Since the greatest creator is unique, formless and neutral, it is also impartial. If a court is controlled by a good person, all the bad people will be punished. If it is controlled by a bad one, all the good people will suffer. If it is controlled by the proletariats, the capitalists will have a hard time and vice versa. If it is controlled by the god or Buddha, the evils will be constrained and vice versa. Only the neutral, non parte is the most impartial. The sunlight is impartial and casts itself on all the people. The air on the earth is breathed by both good people and bad people. The water, which is vital for the life, is available at very cheap price by every person. So the greatest creator is fair and impartial. If the greatest creator is biased and does not allocate the sunlight, air and water this way, some people will control the sunlight, air and water just as they occupy the land and mines. Can we still live on? The greatest creator is impartial also because all people die. If the privileged people could live for one thousand thousands or even forever, the poor would be hopeless. Thus, any thought or practice hoping to give mortality to a certain fraction of people is in conflict with the impartiality idea of the greatest creator and can never be realized. The human beings have tried to eliminate the diseases, such as cholera, typhoid, smallpox, plague, and cancers. It is really a naughty behaviors causing trouble for the greatest creator. For each disease eliminated, the greatest creator has to generate a new disease to take its place, such as HIV slash AIDS, SARS, special air molecules disease, etc. We will have to see who is more powerful, man or the greatest creator. The reason is that the earth cannot sustain so many people if the greatest creator does not generate new diseases which kill some people. If all the people on the earth keep living forever, do we still have enough space to live? It is the same case with a pretty garden. If all the visitors stay inside and do not leave, how can the other visitors come in and enjoy? Is it fair for the latecomers if they are kept out? Some people are always hoping that the good people can get more than the evil people and that the greatest creator should send the evil people to the hell. If the greatest creator fails to do so, it would be unfair. Such naive idea is simply the sentimental wish. Few people would think they themselves are evil or bad. But the fact is that all people are evil. Aren't you evil when you slaughter the animals and eat their meat? When you slaughter them mercilessly regardless of their helpless cry, protest and fear, when you stab the shining knife into their chests or cut off their throats, you are not a kind person at all for the animals. There is no difference between eating meat and slaughtering animals. Meat eating is the bad behavior itself. Why Buddhists would not eat meat? They are just avoiding recommitting sins to enter the higher level space of life after death. All those eating meat are not good. Maybe some people think that it is sensible to slaughter the pig and eat its meat because the pig is raised by themselves. But is it really sensible? Does raising the pig justify slaughtering it? The kids are raised by their parents. Can they be too? Does it really make sense? Notes I talk about the issue of meat eating from the perspective of all life is equal and becoming Buddha. I am not opposed to eating the meat. In fact, I am a meat eater, too. So I am not a good person. Refusing to eat the meat is what good people will do. We advocate vegetarianism. But if all the people refuse to eat meat and become the Buddha, it will break the life cycle. The human beings have their duties to live on the earth. They are part of the life chain. Without this part, the life of many spaces will not have carried on and end in extinction. There will be no hell, thus no heaven. There will no mortal world, thus no fairy land. If all the people do not eat meat, get married, have babies, just like Buddhists do, there will not be the future generations. This is not what the greatest creator wants. By the way, it is absolutely right and promising to believe in Buddhism. But is it also justifiable not to get married and have babies? Is it in line with the intention of the greatest creator? If we look at the history of Buddhism, we will find that each time when the Buddhism is prosperous, there would be a devastating attack on it. Why? Why such an ancient religion can only maintain its survival without being disseminated across the whole world? The problem does not lie in the Buddhism principles, but in the ways of self-improvement.
Here we have to talk about the Falun Gong. As a Buddhahood exercise, Falun Gong is not wrong at all. There are 84,000 kinds of Buddhahood exercises, and Falun Gong is one of them. It is a pleasing thing that the people like Falun Gong as a Buddhahood exercise, which demonstrates that the Chinese people actively pursue goodness. Li Hongji has his merits because he has triggered the people's desire for goodness and progress. He, together with Zhang Hongbao, can be called the masters of spiritual nature. The problem is that it has relabeled the Buddhahood exercise as the Buddhism and upgraded Falun Gong into the so-called Falun Great Law, which is a violation of the Buddhism. What is the Buddhism? In the Diamond Sutra, Sakyamuni said, the so-called Buddhism is no Buddhism. Tathagata once said all laws are Buddhism. If some people say Tathagata has ever explained the Buddhism, they do not understand my words and are actually slandering the Buddha. What Sakyamuni said is told us, to understand the Buddhism, we have to forsake the laws. The laws without laws are Buddhism and vice versa. Falun Gong is correct, but the Falun Great Law is not because it focuses too much on the laws and its laws cannot be Buddhism at all. So what is the law? The law is the order or objective principle adopted by the greatest creator to govern the effective operation of the universe and life. The formula in physics, molecular formula in chemistry, the equation in math, the structural formula in biology, and the casual schema in life science are all laws. All laws are Buddhism and are designed and made by the greatest creator. When lecturing in LA of US in the afternoon of February 15, 2003, Master L.I. Hongji said, So do you understand? All laws are made by me. All life in the prehistoric period was made by the laws without exception. The immeasurable and countless universe, space, and celestial bodies contain immeasurable and countless life, which is generated by the laws. No life is positioned to comment on the laws. He has gone too far. The laws are created by the greatest creator. But Master Li said he has made the loss. So can we conclude that Li Hongji is the greatest creator, or the greatest creator is Li Hongji? There is only one greatest creator in the world, either the one or Li Hongji. Let's presume Li Hongji is the greatest creator. Does Master Li have the eight features of being unique, formless, neutral, mysterious, fair, merciful, superbly powerful, and wise? Human beings can never overcome the greatest creator. If Master Li was really the greatest creator, would Falun Gong have experienced such disastrous difficulty? How could he claim himself as the greatest creator even when finding it difficult to survive on his own motherland? The greatest creator is formless, governing the whole universe and unable to survive, with difficulty, on the earth in the form of human. And Master Li was born in the mortal world, which can be proved by his archives in the past decades. Can he be the greatest creator? The greatest creator has never talked with the human beings directly. And think about the many lectures Master Li has given us. The greatest creator is mysterious. And we know about everything about Master Li. Can he be the greatest creator? The greatest creator is omniscient. Is Master Li omniscient too? He might not be able to answer the questions of physics, chemistry, math or biology for the senior high school students, not mention the questions raised by scientists. Can he be the greatest creator? Li Hongji is a master of spiritual nature, having his own distinctive understanding of the universe and life. But if he goes too far, he is sure to have problems. There are many wise men in the mortal world. Some lives secluded, and some look like average. But they possess great capacity. Some people slow, but they have superb wisdom. Some look normal and ignorant, but they are fully aware of the life essence. They hide their capacity, just as Tao is but they are able to make great achievements at the critical time. All in all, the greatest creator is impartial. The prosperity or decline of an individual, organization, or nation all relies on the balance of the greatest creator. Only by forsaking ourselves can we see the impartiality of the greatest creator. If we do all things centering on ourselves and understand the greatest creator based on our own interest, we can never find the impartiality of the greatest creator or even a shadow of it. Six. The greatest creator is merciful. Because of the sufferings experienced by the human beings in World War II, some people proclaim that the greatest creator is dead. This is a slandering and desecrating to the greatest creator. To understand the greatest creator with the human emotions is just drawing the conclusion from the incomplete data. If we simply judge the features of the greatest creator in the perspective of the life and death, difficulty and poverty of the human beings, 
it is just like appointing the rat as the grand judge of the supreme court of mankind. Can we judge that the greatest creator is merciless when seeing a diligent elderly lady suffering from the paralysis on bed before she dies? Can we judge that the greatest creator is merciless when seeing a kind and honest person suffering from the plight all life? Some people born with a silver spoon do not have virtues at all, but they can obtain power and wealth easily. They do a lot of immoral things in their life and die at an old age with splendid funerals. Can we judge that the greatest creator is biased for the bad people and against the good ones? No, we can't. The greatest creator is merciful. To understand the mercy of the greatest creator, we cannot use the right or wrong criteria of the human beings. We have to make the judgments from the perspective of time space, life cycle, and the level of the spiritual nature. From the chapter of time space in the universe, in the life Chan Yuan, we have known that there are 36 dimensional spaces in the universe. The life cycles among the heaven world, Elysium world, negative black hole body, the 10,000 year world, the thousand year world, mortal world, positive black hole world, livestock world, animal world, plant world. The insect world and bacteria world form the other two life systems, the hell, frozen layer, and inflamed layer. The human beings are in the middle world, the mortal world, and the spiritual nature of mankind is lower than that of the God, Buddha, or celestial beings, but higher than that of the livestock, animals, or plants. The level of the spiritual nature descends from the heaven world to the plant world. For instance, the God knows everything in the universe, and the Buddha knows everything in the fairyland, mortal world, animal world, and plant world, but not in the heaven world. The celestial beings only know everything in the mortal world, animal world, and plant world, but not in the Elysium world or heaven world. The human beings only know about the animal world and plant world, but not in the fairy land, 10,000 year, world and thousand year world, Buddha world, Elysium world, and the God world, heaven world. The animals only know the plant world, but not the other life spaces. The plants are the most ignorant life knowing nothing about the universe and can only take everything upon them. From the perspective of the God, the human beings are ignorant. From the perspective of the Buddha, the human beings are evil. From the perspective of the celestial beings, human beings are short-sighted and stupid. But from the perspective of mankind, human beings are intelligent, though some are good and some are bad. From the perspective of the animals, human beings are scaring and inconceivable. From the perspective of the plants, human beings are fantastic and great. The human beings are ignorant because they don't know where they are from or heading towards. Throughout their life, they are in a muddle, giving up those they should have and pursue things they shouldn't have. When living, they don't know why they live. When dying, they don't know how they die. Human beings are evil because they bully and even kill each other, show disrespect to the god or Buddha, hunt the wild animals, and pollute the waters. If the greatest creator is not merciful, how can it allow us to abuse the earth created by it? From the perspective of human beings, the genetic engineering is a great, marvelous and promising career. But if we see from the angle of the greatest creator, it is dangerous and evil. Someday in the future, the mankind will pay for it. If the greatest creator is not merciful, it will not give us the admonishment and warnings. Imagine we have raised several dogs in our homes. If these dogs have learned to unlock the bedroom doors, what will happen? The human beings are short-sighted and stupid because they only care for the short-term and individual interest instead of the long-term and collective interest. People tend to spend their time making money and seeking fun, reluctant to take time to think about the meaning of life. The result is that they have harvested dozens of years of joy but lost the happy life enduring thousands of years. Everybody understands that if he is all honest, the mortal world will become the paradise. But the fact is that everybody just plays tricks while hoping the others are honest. And only a few of the human beings are honest. Most of them are simply tricky. They not only messed up their own life, also lost the bright future. Now let me answer the three questions raised in the above paragraphs. When the diligent elderly lady had to suffer from the paralysis on bed for years before she passed away, what does it imply? An ambitious and wise boss is aware that, before appointing a staff to an important position, it is imperative to give him the opportunity to experience all difficulties and take almost all tasks in the company, and foster his virtues of selflessness and sacrifice. The stricter the boss is, the more rewards the staff will obtain in the future. Emeo Zedong arranged his son to work as a peasant, worker, and later a soldier in the Korean War. 
Why? He hoped his son would experience some difficulties and know about the common people first before taking the throne. Wise parents also know that they shouldn't spoil their kids by giving them whatever they want. Otherwise, they will not make excellent career in their future life. Too much indulgence in childhood can only lead to regret in the old age. Human beings, in the eyes of the greatest creator, are just in their childhood. Our sufferings are imposed by the greatest creator, who hopes we can go to the better place after the death, the thousand-year world. Or at least we can go back to the mortal world after the death and enter the thousand-year world by self-refining and self-improvement. That's why the wise people regard the greatest creator as the merciful heavenly father. Judging from the perspective of humans, the greatest creator is really merciless to impose sufferings on the diligent elderly lady before her death. However, if we stand in the boots of the greatest creator, we will find the mercy of the greatest creator. It will be really brutal to end the sufferings before her death. The father of the late U.S. President Kennedy would not let others save his son about to be drowned in the river. For ordinary people, he was really merciless. But very few people knew that he was seizing the opportunity to let his son experience the sufferings, hoping he would become someone in the future. So the greatest creator is doing the same thing when imposing sufferings on a good and honest person for his whole life. The U.S. immigration policy has set many regulations. Only by following these regulations can one be qualified to live on this land. To work as a professor in Oxford or Cambridge University, you have to obtain certain level of education and experience. Even if you are lucky and have obtained a position there, you cannot maintain the job because the students will find the common sense mistakes and confused logics made by you. An excellent family will not allow their future generations to marry imprudently. A pure organization does not accept new members unscrupulously. The thousand-year world is a piece of pure land, refusing the access of stinking people, just like the sitting room will not tolerate the existence of dog droppings or chicken manure. Imposing sufferings on a good and honest person is just to cultivate his or her virtues so that he or she may be qualified to enter the thousand-year world. Jesus said, Blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are those who mourn. Why? The greatest creator said, For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Sakyamuni said, The humble life of the living people is just eliminating their sins and the past life. Only in this way can they be self-improved and reach the supreme wisdom. The celestial being Lao Tzu said, Blessings are disguised by misfortunes, and in order to take, one must first give. The greatest creator has given much thought before imposing sufferings and plied on a good and honest person for the whole life. To give lifelong fortune and happiness to a person sounds very attractive, but that person is really over-consuming the blessings. The more you get, the more you will lose. Everyone knows that the higher one climbs, the more serious injury he will get when falling down. Everything in the universe follows the principle of unity of the opposites. At last, the gain will equal to the lost. The more you lose, the more you will gain. The less you gain, the less you will lose. An Indian religion advocates asceticism. It is not an ignorant practice. Rockefeller, who got rich on the oil mines, donated hundreds of million of dollars to the charity and only kept a small part of his wealth. He was not an old fool. The Kung Fu star Jet Li donated his ad's income to the temple, not because he has too much money to spend. They have understood what Tao is, and they have possessed the wisdom. Can we still say the greatest creator is not merciful? If all the human beings believe the greatest creator does not exist, the mankind will not exist either. The greatest creator is there because a large number of human beings believe in and admire the greatest creator. Because of this, the greatest creator allows us to live on the earth in hopes we can follow him, give up evil and return to the good. From this point, the greatest creator is very merciful. 7. The greatest creator is supremely powerful. The whole universe is an aggregate of all energy, in which there is an energy cluster. The relationship between the aggregate and the energy cluster is just like that between the egg white and egg yolk. In this energy cluster, egg yolk, there is a very small energy embryo which also contains an even smaller nucleus. The nucleus is the nerve center of the universe, which is the casual body of the energy and the thought zone of the universe. This is the greatest creator. Energy itself does not have consciousness or thought. The mammoth energy emitted by the nuclear bomb explosion can kill both the bad people and the good people. 
It can destroy the king's palaces and the thatched cottages, simply because the energy does not have the consciousness. The energy is extremely powerful, but the thought is even more powerful, which means that the thought of the scientists who made the nuclear bombs is even more powerful than the nuclear bombs. The small nucleus in the energy cluster, the nerve center of the universe, which is the greatest creator, is even more powerful than the overall energy of the universe. That's why we say the greatest creator is supremely powerful and is surpassing the energy. 8. The greatest creator is absolutely wise. The great wisdom of the greatest creator is shown in the following three aspects. Build the cosmic order. The cosmic order includes 1. The macro-celestial moving order, such as the orderly movement of the low rotary galaxy, the rotary river galaxy, the galaxy, and the star system. 2. The micro-material structure order, such as the orderly movement of the molecule, atom, electron, proton, nucleon, mesin, hyperon, veritron. 3. The order of life transmigration. For instance, when a person's spiritual nature is upgraded to a certain degree, he or she will become the celestial being or God. When the spiritual nature is degraded to a certain level, he or she will become a dog, pig, or a tree. If the person's spiritual nature remains the same, he or she can become a person too in the next life cycle. Such is the case with an ox, which can become a person or another animal when its spiritual nature is upgraded or downgraded. A celestial being can be upgraded into the Buddha or downgraded into a person. Design the life structure. Life structure mainly refers to the gene of all kinds of life's forms. The gene, just like the unexposed films, can be repeatedly copied. The genes of all kinds of lives forms, the films, are different from each other. The genes of humans are different from those of the pigs. Those of the cats are different from the birds. The genes of the willows are different from those of the peach trees. And those of the roses are different from the peony. In general, the genes are featured by the homogeneity compatibility and heteronature repulsion. For instance, the yellow, black and white races of human beings are of the same nodder and compatible with each other so they can get married and have babies. However, the humans, animals and plants, because their genes are not of the same kind and repulse each other, cannot have sexual intercourse. Even if they have, no life can be generated. Though ox, sheep, dog, cat, pig, chicken, tiger, leopard, deer, rat, snake and otter are all animals, they can't mate and reproduce because their genes are not of the same type or characteristics. However, the genes of a few lives forms are similar. For instance, humans and apes, horses and donkeys, wolves and dogs, chickens and peacocks, apple trees and pear trees can mate or get engrafted. But the new life forms produced are not the same as their parents and they can't produce their own future generations. For instance, the humans and apes can produce barbarians, who are infertile. The horses and donkeys produce mules, which are infertile, too. The wolves and dogs can have the infertile bay. The chicken and peacocks can produce the infertile phoenix. And the apples trees engrafted to the pear trees can produce the infertile apple pears. Though resembling each other, the humans and monkeys have different genetic structures and can mate. Even if they mate with each other, they cannot produce any new life. That's why humans are not evolved from the monkeys. Of course, we can't say the monkeys are degenerated from the humans, either. The fertilized egg only visible via the microscope will end up growing into a tangible life with head, feet, eyes, nose, hair, eyebrows, skin, nails, heart, and blood vessels. It is the fruit of the greatest creator's great wisdom. The human hair can grow limitlessly, but the eyebrows and eyelashes, when growing to a certain length, will not continue the growth anymore. Why? Because the growth of hair will not impact on the activity of the life while the growth of eyebrows and eyelashes will block the vision. From the embryo to a grown-up, the life grows in strict proportions, which is also designed by the greatest creator. Otherwise, the left leg is already one meter long while the right one is very short, or the head has taken shape but the ear hasn't grown. It will produce a monster, or the heart has begun to work while the blood vessels haven't started their growth. Thus the heart will die from lack of oxygen. As a matter of fact, the mechanics engineers and the architectural engineers are also the designers of the genes. The drawings of machines, buildings, and bridges designed by them are genes of structures. Based on these genetic structures, they will manufacture real machines and build buildings or bridges. 
The work of the workers is based on and within the framework of these genetic structures, drawings. If a building is designed to for five floors, the workers will not build a six-floor building. The genetic structure has even defined the window size, position, and materials, the wiring, and piping. The evolutionists believe that humans are evolved from the monkeys, monkeys from the insects, insects from the simple cells, the birds from the terrestrial animals, and terrestrial animals from the aquatic life. It is the same as the airplanes are evolved from the buildings and buildings from the Swiss mechanical watches. Know the present and the future. The great leader Chairman Mao Zedong predicted in his life the future development of more than 20 issues, which later proved to be fit. Why? That's because Mao Zedong is a man of wisdom. Anyone who knows the future development of one thing or several things is wise. The wiser he is, the more accurate prediction he can give. The scientists are people of wisdom because they have made most of the inventions. Without wisdom, any activities will definitely become messy and disorderly. A country running in order and balance where people enjoy their life and work is often governed by a wise brain trust. If the people in this country voice frequent complaints and are annoyed by the criminals, it is definitely governed by a leadership without wisdom. If a family, in three generations' time, still can't cultivate some promising one in it, it is a family without wisdom. If a person lives in poverty and is not able to grasp any opportunity throughout life, or the person doesn't know what to do first and what to do second, he or she is someone with no wisdom. Some people can detect the opportunity from the shift of national leadership or find the future development from a newly launched national policy and change its target. These people have the wisdom. Some people can find the essence from the phenomenon or know the time of qualitative change from the speed of quantitative change. These people have the wisdom. Zhuge Liang is such a person, proved by his memorial on sending out the troops and his weather forecast ability before a battle. Everything in the universe runs according to the laws, whether the celestial movement, life growth, ebb and flow, or human life change, etc. None is able to run away from the restrictions of the rules. Those who know the laws of things and their movement know about the future. Human beings are able to forecast the time of solar and lunar eclipse hundreds of years later, the calendar and the cosmology destiny of billions of years later, and the weather and temperature in a few weeks' time. They also know that it takes 18 years for a baby to become a grown-up. The skilled and experienced doctor can know the estimated death date of his patient by judging through the symptoms. Some people with special capacity can calculate a person's lifespan. For instance, a Taoist priest once told Chairman MAO two numbers, 99 and 8,341. These two numbers coincidentally match many big events in his life. Everything in the universe is in a cause-effect relationship. Everything in the universe is logical and governed by the laws. Everything has its destiny, having a start and an end. So the wiser you are, the more you know about the mystery of the universe. The greatest creator knows the past and future of everything in the universe. The god and devil know the movement and change of the majority of things. The Buddha knows the past and future of human beings. Confined by their genetic structures, the humans can never know everything. For instance, they never know the last number of pi. They even don't know whether pi is limited or cyclic. Humans can never have the same wisdom as the greatest creator does, but they can reach the level of God or Buddha. The problem is that when we have the wisdom of the God or Buddha, we cannot or don't want to be a human anymore. The ordinary humans want to survive. When they possess the wisdom of Buddha or God, they want to die. For them, survival is meaningless and death is vital for the life. If they have a fortunate death, they can enter the thousand-year world. If they have a bad death, they have to endure sufferings for the next cycle of life. The pleasure and happiness rely on the ignorance. Once they are literate, the distress and trouble will follow. The pleasure and happiness of the humans cannot arouse the interest of the literate people who see the life as a tragedy. I can give you an example. A young deer is jumping and playing joyfully because it is ignorant. When it knows the surrounding tiger and wolf are killers, it will not be happy anymore. As human beings, they never intend to become a young deer simply because of the pleasure and happiness it enjoys. The God and Buddha never intend to become a human, either, unless he is from the higher level space of life with a special mission. Arrow underscore upward. English edition.